And our Time for Reflection leader today is Reverend Linda Haggerston, National Interfaith Officer, Scottish Pagan Federation. Thank you for inviting me as an interfaith activist and representative for Scottish Pagans. Well, this is a first. This is the first time a pagan has delivered the time for reflection at the Scottish Parliament. This comes shortly after the Scottish Parliament issued a message on social media wishing pagans a happy winter solstice. So let's see what the lady has to say. Modern paganism's greatest benefit and its biggest challenge is its diversity in both belief and practice. My chosen path is Druidry, but a pagan may, for example, identify as Wiccan, heathen, or a witch. So she's saying in paganism, diversity is our strength. She's certainly speaking the language of the Scottish Parliament there. She also seems to be saying it doesn't really matter what you believe to be a pagan, I would argue. It doesn't matter what you believe because you don't want to believe things that are not true. You want to believe things that are true. She also talks about uh, witches, witchcraft there. I would say witchcraft um, has its dangers, shall we say. Paganism is an umbrella term which has evolved over time from a slur that still lingers in the world today and is often met with discrimination and scorn. Well, limited sympathy with pagans when they say, you know, they are, people have a bad impression of them. If you decide to label yourself a pagan, I mean, in pagan times, what was going on? Human sacrifice, ritual sex, all sorts of amorality. So if you choose that label, inevitably with that comes some PR issues. And there's, there's not really any point in complaining about that. It's a bit like Satanists always say, you know, we're misunderstood. Don't be put off by the fact that we worship the spiritual embodiment of evil. We're actually really nice people, you prejudiced bigot. You know, I don't really buy that. Recognition of our interconnectedness with each other, with the earth, and with all existences, seen and unseen. The belief that we are here to consciously honour, respect, and care for the earth, to which we are inextricably connected. Well, that's not quite worship of the earth, but it's sort of maybe heading in that sort of direction, isn't it? And again, they're probably going to lap this up in the Parliament. Currently, the Green Party are probably the least religious or spiritual of the parties in the Parliament. But with options like this, who knows, that could change. Now, the lady talks about all existences. By that, I think she's meaning to encompass animal life as well. Again, that's really hitting the mark in the Scottish Parliament. I mean, barely... You know, a, a term goes by without a new act being introduced, something to do with dogs, uh, protecting dogs. Um, so, I mean, who knows? This lady could be the official chaplain of the Scottish Parliament soon at this rate. And a balance of masculine and feminine energies. Ah, it's just gone wrong for her there, hasn't it? That, she's hit a wrong note as far as the Scottish Parliament are concerned. I mean, what she said there was maybe a bit more in tune with Scottish Family Party than Scottish National Party. Uh, masculine energy, feminine energy... I think they'd probably want to argue there's no such thing. Feminine and masculine are just social constructs. Men and women are really the same. And if they didn't, if they weren't thinking that, they'd think, oh, masculine energy, we don't need to balance the masculine and feminine. We need to suppress the masculine because that's toxic. That's how we make the world a better place, uh, making it more feminine. Um, so unfortunately, the lady was probably lost the job of chaplain to the Scottish Parliament there. We all this talk about energies. It means some sort of vague spiritual force. Man, I, I don't buy that personally, but... Anyway, let's carry on. As pagans, we're continuously learning to be more inclusive of differing ability, culture, ethnicity, gender, sexuality, age, and other characteristics. Praise be, she worships at the altar of the sacred protected characteristics. I mean, listen to this lady, the Equality Act could have been written by Druids leaning against Stonehenge. Maybe she's got the job after all. But having said that, there's stiff competition because about half of the people who go and deliver the time for reflection in the Scottish Parliament say the same sort of thing. And it harm none, do what ye will. Harm none, do what you will. That is terrible advice. That is a woeful moral directive. Harm none, that's sort of okay. But the problem is people are really bad at judging whether their actions are going to cause harm or not. Because that's a very difficult thing to weigh up. People tend to be very selfish when they make those assessments for themselves. They also tend to look at things in a very short-term way. That's why we need traditions and rules and standards within a society, more than just 
harm none. So it comes to, you know, shall I take a dangerous illegal drug? Harm none. Well, it doesn't harm anyone else. So that, that must be okay. But it does harm other people. You know, same with, with sexual morality as well. If I have sex with that person, does that do any harm? Well, it may seem not, but maybe in the longer term, for the two people, maybe it does. So the do as you will bit there, I think is quite dangerous. So what she's saying there, I feel is adding to the moral confusion and naivety of the Scottish Parliament. So that's what she had to say, basically edited highlights. Sorry to disappoint you if you're hoping for, you know, a goat being sacrificed or casting a spell or naked ritual dancing or whatever. And to be honest, that was Reverend Linda Hagerston. So I assume she must have been an ordained minister uh, previously in life. To be honest, if Rever Reverend Linda Hagerston was, for example, representing the Scottish Episcopal Church, what she should have said might not have been very different at all. Just a few details edited. So do I object to a pagan delivering the time for reflection address in the Scottish Parliament? Well, basically, no. Because people of all religions are represented there. And if there's a group of people calling themselves pagans and someone invites one of those to, to deliver the time for reflection address from time to time, well, how different is that from having you know Muslims, Sikhs, Hindus, whoever else, all sorts of Christian denominations? So I don't have a problem in principle with that. Someone might say, but it's a Christian country. Well, Scotland is not majority Christian in any meaningful sense. And in any case, lots of other religious groups uh, are, invite, are are represented in the time for reflection. I don't really have a problem with that. Someone might try and argue about oh, paganism is evil, so they shouldn't be allowed in on those grounds. Now, uh, that could be an argument someone could try and make. I mean, do, does that mean you know, anything goes? What if there's a Satanist? You know, we're going to have a Satanist delivering the time for reflection address. With that, I think I'd be inclined to say no. That would be a step too far. Then someone could come back at me and say, ah, but paganism and Satanism, they do overlap to a significant degree. So we're getting into a bit of a grey area. So I think to make an argument that a certain religious group should not be represented in the time for reflection, that would need a very careful argument. Um, and that's not what I'm going to make here. Maybe at some point in the future, maybe when a Satanist does go along, maybe I'll need to look at that and uh, lay out such an argument. But I won't do that for the time being. Just going back to the SNP, though. So they wished the people of Scotland happy solstice. Now, not too long ago, the SNP government were pardoning witches, you know, for, from hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Now, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, lots of people were punished uh, through the, the just so-called justice system for all manner of crimes uh, that we don't think really you know, exist anymore, shouldn't have been crimes. But they picked out witches in particular to be pardoned. Now, why is that? Now, at the time, I thought that was just an expression you know, Nicola Sturgeon and the SNP's uh, feminism. But I'm now thinking, was there a bit more to it than that? Was it a bit of feminism? Was it a little bit of paganism? Uh, sympathy for paganism as well? I don't know. If you look at BBC reports about paganism, the BBC is extremely pagan positive. And uh, this week at the World Economic Forum, they had a little pagan ritual performed. I would probably, you know, these sort of values would fit their agenda as well. And really anyone who wants a spiritual veneer on their own ideas can look to paganism to provide that. So just watch this. No matter who, no why, why should I? You might remember Nikki Coyer, one of the key men producing the RSHP.scot sex education resources that are used not far off universally across schools in Scotland. So here is he performing at Satan's Disco. You'll note the traditional sort of satanic sign there as well. Now, the SNP has got connections with the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, which also overlap as well with the SNP, and the Beltane Fire Festival, which puts on sort of pagan ritual performances in Edinburgh like this. Now, for the full story about those connections, there's a video at the end. Look in the end screen. I would strongly recommend you watch it. It's quite uh, interesting. Let's just put it that way. 
I've heard a few Christians talking about the fact that a pagan has given the Time for Reflection address in the Parliament, and they're up in arms about something. You know, how terrible. Have you heard that this has happened? This is really awful, isn't it? And also, quite a few Christians recently, I've heard them saying, you know, that card Hamza Yousaf said, where he mentioned all the other winter festivals, he didn't mention Christmas. Isn't that terrible? You know, what can we do about this? And my reaction is, well, Hamza Yousaf's card? Yeah, I, I, I'm not pleased that he deliberately missed out Christmas. That's not good at all. Why, why would he do that? But on the other hand, I would say, right, let's just assess our priorities here. Where do those things come on our uh, list of priorities compared to 16,000 unborn children killed every year? Compared to children being corrupted and confused on an industrial scale, lives destroyed, families torn apart by government, educational and social policy. Well, I hope the, the answer is self-evident. It is to me. I hope it is to you as well. So what's the Parliament for? It's not there to be a spiritual arbiter. The job of the Scottish Parliament is not to decide which religious beliefs are true or false. The job of the Scottish Parliament and the Scottish Government is to run the country and implement policies that, for the greater good. And that's not going to happen if those policies are founded on things that are not true or things that are not right. Uh, but it's like, more likely to happen if their policies are founded on things that are true and are right. So that's our mission as the Scottish, uh, Scottish Family Party, is to bring influence into the Scottish uh, Parliament to create policies based on justice, righteousness and truth. And if you want to support us in that mission, do join the Scottish Family Party. We need your support. There's a link below and you can join right now or just become a regular donor. Thanks for watching.